the mercy of the Creator are illuminating down to the darkest places of them all. And when our Maker is looking at things or in reality, the darkness is shining like the light. Maybe not to our eyes, but in reality, when you gonna go and search and look over there, you can see anything, nothing can be hidden in reality. And the night is shining as the day and our place, the place where we are at, that can be a place of darkness that there was never darkness like that before. A place that prayers are blocked and not accepted. We feel that, might feel that sending them under a ceiling of iron, metal sky that cannot penetrate, lacking of godly bounty that revives the world, but we might find ourselves feeling so far from it and separated it. You eat and you don't feel the taste of the food. You drink and you don't feel like the water gives you anything. You feel yourself so separated, divided from the spirit, from spirituality. But our maker, he observes and watch over all the generations and he can see the world in its eternity the source of life is reflecting his being into our creation. And our lives are a direct straight reflection of his greatness. And when he observes and look at our lives and reveals his compassion, so that eyesight of our maker through his eyes light is shining towards us and our lives becomes fruitful. When he's looking at us with his brightening face, we are receiving our life, a godly spirit that is treasured inside our bodies. Now that spirit, that soul is shining in such great light but that light can barely be seen because our awareness is to our bodies. And like that, if you take a small coin, I'm looking for something to use as an example. If you're gonna take something small that almost meaningless in its size and weight, but you're gonna bring it closer and closer to your eye with that small and tiny thing, you can block all your eyesight and cannot see anymore. And you can ask yourself, how can it be that something so small is blocking the whole world that is so gigantic and, and huge? Like how people become so blinded for money or for their lusts for women or whatever. And they cannot see the world. They cannot see their families. They cannot see that there are things that are way more important than their lusts or their fears. But because that, that coin that you took is so close now to your eye and you're focusing on it and you're not looking at the world, by that you give power to the small physical thing to shade and block your eye from seeing the greater view. So it all depends in our awareness, in our eyesight. Where are we looking to? Where are we looking at? What are we looking for? So when the soul is inside our bodies, it has the great potential of shining to the heights, to the furthest places of them all as a lighthouse that saves boats from crashing to the rocks in the middle of the darkest night. But that light can be also blocked inside and hidden and treasured that no person will ever see it. The soul went into a body that is trapped in a world of physicality that surrounds it from outside. 
means that when you open your eyes, you see the outside world. When you want to taste something, you must take something from outside and put it to your mouth. You smell things that are coming from outside. Your soul is exposed to the world, to an external world, to a world that surrounds it from outside. It's an inner existence. Your soul is a being that is being in the present time inside a body that is experiencing emotional and physical and spiritual experiences. And it's alive. Your soul is alive, is godly, is spiritual, and it's emotional, and it's broken. <laughs> it's broken because we miss our Maker. The soul is experiencing such huge dividing, such crazy separation that she could never imagine that she will find itself falling into. And now, she finds itself in a world that is covering it with darkness and as well under a covering of forgetfulness because she does not have an access because she is trapped in our awareness and our awareness is self-centered wrapped with physicality. So the soul lost its inner connection to the ancient archive to the complete eternal knowledge of all world's information and beyond the world's information, infinity itself. So you don't know and do not remember the power of your soul. Who are you in the world of creation, in the world of making? And we are in this world of action. We're trapped in a world that is designed in body and shapes and we are bent and forced to those powers of nature. We cannot walk without our legs. We cannot eat without our mouths. We cannot enjoy things unless we're gonna surrender to this world supervision somehow to accept it on ourselves. If you wanna feel some pleasure, you need to do something for that. <coughs> Even if it's a spiritual act of learning or praying, whatever, meditating, you must close your eyes and focus. You must do something for that. And that is the free choice of the person. If to be his body, if to focus his mind towards his body needs, or to be the light of our godly soul that is on a mission, that is treasured within us and is on a mission to come back to the place where we were at before time in the ancient time that we were part of before creation. In the divine and highly world that over there, even though that you are an individual soul, because you are yourself and you're experiencing your unique shade and color being part of the rest of the souls in the same time you're not trapped over the, that really separates you from the rest so you keep your beautiful individuality while enjoying the unity with all the rest of the souls as well and you become one with them while being your true self so we can choose and that's our mission to choose to reunite with all the rest of the souls in great bond with great connection everything that we saw until now in all the times in all the levels all the experience of this existence of our universe of the world in and out all that knowledge all that truth was a reflection of the honor of His greatness, of Hashem's greatness. That life experience of ours and of our ancestors is the reflection 
of heaven's kingship to this world's kingship and they're equal in a way even though our world's reflection is more physical and heavier thick we can say but is still through a certain filter a direct reflection of the highest reflection of them all that is the name of Hashem that is Yud Kei Vav Kei it's the name of Hashem that Hashem dresses His name and that name dresses other names that are all names of Hashem and in the end dresses all names that are being called in the creation in the universe and those names are reflecting Hashem's wisdom through themselves to the next level till the level where our awareness is at. I think <laughs> that's it for this time. There is much more to say and Bezad Hashem will find the right way and right time to do so. Thank you.